Okay, it looks like we're back. So I'll be moving on to the next topic. And the next topic is a uh, turn in a different direction. Um, it is a uh, more psychological topic. And that topic is uh, group polarization. Now, group polarization is a phenomenon seen in the psychology world where um, when a group gets together and the group is all generally thinking along the same terms on a situation, let's say if you had a group of jurors in a room and all of them were basically thinking that the guy's guilty and they maybe weren't sure. If you get people who are somewhat like-minded into a room with each other and they are isolated, then you will see that uh, their ideologies are exaggerated by the, uh, by the new by the uh, group of people they are with and this is a uh, common phenomenon like I had seen, said uh, so basically um, th this is an important phenomena in psychology because it applies to a lot of different situations in uh, our society today so this can apply to things like politics um, so what what do we see in politics well first off when it comes to a presidential debate or a presidential election the process of electing a president is first the uh the parties have primaries and these primaries are where um within the party the political the uh different voters can vote for a nomination for that party to run against the opposite opposing party's nomination. Well, how does this apply to group polarization? Well, everything about this applies to group polarization. So what what you'll see, and, and this does happen a lot, is that the uh, politicians that are involved in these primaries are very, very far to their side when when it comes to the debates so when a, a uh, let's say a republican so republicans are normally conservative let's say when you watch a republican primary debate then in the primaries you will see that the candidates tend to ex go towards the extreme of their party so in the case of a republican they would say they, they would be very conservative in their manner and very conservative in the things they claim to support. And this is interesting because um, because once they get out of the primaries, they will uh, start to come back and be a little more middle ground. And there are some outside factors in this situation when it comes to a actual presidential debate, uh, actual presidential election, and not um, a primary, they are attempting to gain the voters from the opposite side, which will give them the edge. But it is uh, somewhat of a, an example. But uh, what you will see as a perfect example is when the different parties have rallies or conferences. And what happens at these conferences is everyone there, or let's say 90%, some substantial portion of the people there are in the same ideo ideological spectrum. So what happens is when it comes to uh, talking about different topics, the people will tend to get even further towards the extreme of their party while being at these conferences and the general trend of the conference will be uh, will be for the um, for the candidates and for the people attending to become slightly more towards the ideological extreme 
this is useful in the terms of politics because it is really good at it is a really good method for gaining support and and pushing people uh, to be more towards their uh, cause and and ideology but this can also be dangerous um, in terms of uh, maybe let's say if we have a group of uh, young people that are all out and just hanging out with the idea of group polarization this can uh, add to the effects of peer pressure so when someone says hey we should go do something then and some people might have been thinking about it but they weren't necessarily sure they wanted to do this in the realm of group polarization those people will amplify their mild desire to go do this activity and it will uh, they will become sure that they want to participate in this activity um, you can see this in even more lighthearted uh, situations like let's say there's a sports team at a at a restaurant now if you've ever been to a restaurant with a sports team you're on you'll notice that the etiquette tends to get thrown out the window so maybe uh, activities like messing with people's drinks or disrespecting the waiter slash, wait slash waitress um, start to arise from the situation and uh, things that you didn't think that you would ever do in a restaurant uh, you start to do because you are around these people and everybody is starting the minute one person starts something then everyone starts to do more and more extreme activities um, so this is uh, something that something that occurs even in everyday life but uh, it is something that uh, philosophers and psychologists have been uh, worrying about and and have been spreading knowledge about for a while now um, even I believe it was Alexander Hamilton when creating the Constitution and and uh, starting the nation um, he exclaimed that it is important to have many different factions because if if there are more groups out there with different ideologies then the general group polarization will be cancelled out um, even if that minor group becomes slightly less uh, slightly more towards their ideological extreme there will be another group with the opposite ideological extreme that uh, can cancel out with them and it uh, so this could be problematic if one specific uh, if one specific political party starts to dominate the political system now with just two this can still become problematic but it is a little bit harder just because like I said since the uh, political parties tend to be opposing in view they will cancel each other out sometimes so it is not as uh, much of a problem as it could be but um, another example that I just threw in here was uh, that um, you can see this on the internet a lot and so uh, basically what what uh, what I mean by that is what happens is if you can't see someone face to face you tend to be you're already a little more out of your shell in what you will do and what you will say so um, the example that I was uh, that I'm bringing up here is uh, is Nickelback. So you may laugh at that, but um, basically what I'm saying is that uh, Nickelback was never. I mean, they they were never a good band, but they weren't bad. They weren't terrible. And what happens is the minute one person says they don't like them and everyone's like oh yeah I mean they're not the best then that's when group polarization kicks in so what happens is everybody says oh they're not okay they're not the best and then 
the next day they say oh they're pretty bad because the thing is with group polarization is you want to stand out as an opinion that is your natural tendency you want to be expressed and to be noticed so uh, you will see that the effects of group polarization cause people to be a little bit more extreme in their in their analysis and in their opinions and so that's exactly what happens is that people say hey Nickelback isn't that good and hey I don't like Nickelback and hey Nickelback is terrible and then that's when the internet and its monsters take hold of it so in my opinion and from my outside perspective I would say that Nickelback isn't the best band but there isn't really a problem with what they're trying to do um, but that's just an opinion and you can take that as you will um, and with that I'll be moving on to my uh, next section it's a little less structured but I will explain that after a, another short ad so uh, I will be right back <laughs> 